Now that's not good enough. The people want to know what this new system is going to pay for. We don't believe it's revenue neutral, let me say that, but if it is revenue neutral, there's no reason why it can't be delayed. The short answer is 55% of all households either stay the same or are better off by these changes. Now bear in mind that the rate changes we're talking about now won't raise any extra money at all. The rates changes we're talking about now are redistributing who pays the existing rates. So that for everybody who's paying more, there are by definition some people who are paying less. And my only question to those who criticise the system is to say, are you objecting to a more progressive form of taxation which says that if you're able to pay, then you pay a higher amount and if you are less wealthy and with lower income, you pay less? Asset rich, income poor. I'll give you an example. Someone who bought a house maybe 25, 30 years ago for five, six thousand pounds, it's now worth maybe 650, 700 thousand pounds because of the area it's in, which has been driven up also by speculation and property investment and developers, who ironically some of whom are, who are landlords and won't have to pay rates if they've students in their property, but that's another issue. So the asset rich income poor people, for example, pensioners, who are living in a property which is worth a lot of money, but they're living on a small pension, be it a state pension or be it a, a pension which they receive from their husband or from their wife um, or a works pension, whatever it is, and they cannot afford to pay the rates bill. For example, I mean, the highest bill in Northern Ireland is £14,000, and we keep asking the question, why should someone, a pensioner in Northern Ireland, pay that? Um, based on the value of the property, when Tony Blair pays £1,300 for his home in London. The system is not fair. It is believed that the groups most affected by the legislation will be those who fall outside the benefits bracket, those on low incomes and pensioners. The rates legislation will affect pensioners in Northern Ireland, and particularly the older pensioners who have perhaps lived in their houses for quite some time, who, um, whose houses have increased massively in value through no real fault of their own. A lot of, you know, it's, it's purely, you know, geographical location, of, you know, where they live. Their houses may be, say, you know, they've been bought 30, 40 years ago, and they're now being hit with massive rates increases when their incomes are not what they, what they were. And they're on fixed incomes with increased outgoings in terms of you know, increased energy bills, electricity bills, um, you know, rates, water charges, everything else. In relation to those who are asset rich, income poor, this is a, a, a problem because over a 30 year period, uh, capital values have increased significantly. And um, it is possible that you will have people who are living in highly valued properties who do not have uh, the means or in fact have lesser means to pay the, the new, rateable, uh, new rate requirement. Uh, in this, this case, there would normally be uh, reliefs. At the moment, we are told there will be a transitional relief. Those who are paying 33% more than they would have done uh, under the uh, old system will have a four-year transitional period before they are charged the full amount. The whole question of reliefs is really a political decision and it relates to the political input that should be embedded in the system comparable to that in Great Britain. I don't think that the basic state pension at all helps cover the costs now of people's outgoing and daily expenses. You have increasing, the rising cost of oil or gas you know, people you know, have increasing costs to heat their homes. We have uh, increased rates, incoming water charges, and the basic state pension is not increasing at the rate that um, all those bills are, are increasing. And the point is that you know, whilst the government says that you need about £115 a week to live on as a single pensioner, you only get £80 of that as of right. The rest you've got to apply for, fill in the forms, and effectively beg for what should be yours as right. I understand why they are surprised and annoyed because the groups that have been underrated in the past tend to have been those who are now making the biggest complaints because of the adjustment. I don't have a lot of sympathy with the idea that because you have property that is very valuable, you shouldn't actually pay rates in proportion to the value of that property. I do have some sympathy if you're living in property that's very valuable and for reasons of 
change in your family, you are now uh, asset rich but income poor. But then the scheme as is being introduced does allow for that. I don't think we should think of it as being unsympathetic uh, to the, in the low income families. Indeed, it is very sympathetic to them. From the politicians at the start was lacklustre but I understand where they are coming from in that they have raised this issue with the, the direct rule ministers over a number of years and really they just haven't been listened to so that's why they need to get into the assembly as soon as possible so that they can take our views on boards on board and the views of, of other people about other legislation such as the water charges sewage charges all those kinds of things Popular opinion has been very strong on this issue. To reflect growing concerns, a number of public meetings have been called. The most recent of these was held in the Ulster Hall, where angry Northern Ireland residents came face to face with the Minister David Hanson. that the people who have got involved in the discussion on the rates debate have allowed themselves to be sidetracked into a spurious issue. Whether the value of property is based on the rental valuation, whether it's based on the capital value, it is a spurious way to raise taxes. It is a stealth tax that the government can do because it says it's indirect. The honest, the real thing that they ought to do is to add money to the income tax. That way the people who earn most money will pay most tax and we can all get our cut out of it. It seems uh, a very dramatic change without very little public consultation. My rates during the past year were just over a thousand pounds. I expect that next April my rate will be 3,300 and with water rates added it's likely to be 3,800. That's an increase of 2,800 pounds. I'm a pensioner and where will I find £2,800 each year? And uh, it may well be there will be some folk uh, who are even worse than I and will discover that the increase will be greater than their income tax, the, the full income tax that is supposed to co cover all the costs for national service, be that education, uh, health, uh, the army and everything else. Why are we paying these dramatic increases? The Minister Hanson has told us that the rates uh, are going to be fair uh, I listened to him a couple of weeks ago on Let's Talk and it was clear that what he had to say was clearly unfair and the entire audience at that programme uh, uh, told him that it was unfair. So I wonder, has he changed his mind for this evening or will he uh, basically stick to the plan? And I, The reason that I think it's unfair is asking us to pay uh, these uh, charges when there are differences between uh, the charges that are being applied in England and here uh, in, in order to compensate, if you like, for the 30-odd uh, the years of underinvestment in Northern Ireland is absolutely unjust.